Mishe Ifni Horishk from Glor Tira on TG Cahad, and you're listening to Seamus Long and Cupcake on Irish Country Music Radio. Van Soltas. There you have Noel Briardy, one of the contestants on uh, the Glor Tira, and that is going out tonight, the quarterfinals of it. And you know what? You know what we have? We have the presenter, Miss Eva Nishurshik. I'm pre- uh, actually, I'm not too sure, am I pronouncing it right? But I'm sure Eva will tell me. She is, of course, the presenter of Glor Tira, and she is joining us here for a quick chat. Hello, Eva. Hello, how are you, Seamus? I'm not too bad at all, not too bad. And tell me, Aoife, did I pronounce your name right? Uh, you were close enough, don't worry about it at all, James. As long as we have Aoife from Gorty, that's all good with me. There's no panic at all on the name. <laughs> it makes a change, you see, I'm usually getting in trouble with ladies, you see. like So when one says, I ah, know you're all right, you're good now, I'm delighted then. Now... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, makes a change, makes a change. Now, we have uh, the Glor Tira quarter final tonight, and uh, mm-hmm. I'd say things are heating up and hotting up up there in Galway, are they? Oh, uh, they are, Seamus. You know, I love the show, but when this crack starts and people start leaving, I don't like it. Mm. I really hate to see them go. Last week, we lost two brilliant contestants, Martin Power and Aidan Quinn, and this, tonight now we're going to lose another two. And... I know you've visited us on the set before, and you know, like, we're a very tight crew, like, we all get on really well. So even though it's a competition, I hate to see anybody go, especially when we've got such a strong bunch. Um, but tonight we're going to have to say goodbye to another two, unfortunately, because it's the quarterfinals. Yeah, I was, actually, what you did say there, yeah, I was up. I've been. I was up there last year. I was up with a friend of mine, Annette Doyle, last year, and uh, I decided to up and dropped up again there and up there last week. And yes, you're. Tr- it's very true what you say. There's a very tight knit. Uh, you know, there's a very tight knit group there, and all the contestants they all seem to love it up there. You know, I mean, they all seem to be very welcomed into the place, if you like. Oh, that's the thing about country. I've worked on so many different types of programs and different things. You can't beat the people that you meet in country and Irish music. They're all genuine. It's You rarely meet a bad egg. And that's the truth. Because they don't survive. Because the audience are so in touch with the people in stage. And they can read them. And they know them. And they have their number. And if they don't like them, they don't succeed. And they don't stay in the game. So usually you're dealing with very genuine, very nice people. And everybody sees that it's a great platform, that it's a great advantage. And at the end of the day, you know, Glorteed or any other competition, you could be famous for five minutes at the end of it, but you're going to have to put in the hard work yourself afterwards to build on it. So really, you know, if it says you walk on somebody as you're going up the way, you're only going to meet them on the way down. So, And the policy they seem to have on Glorteed, the contestants, to be fair to them, is, you know, may the best man win. And in the meantime, let's just try and build a nice platform for themselves and then get their name out there and do a bit of touring, work with their mentors. It's a great opportunity for them to springboard somewhere else. You saw that with Lisa McHugh. She didn't win. She was the runner-up. But she's got a great career out of it. She has, um, yeah. That and we've had be... her back as a mentor, and she's an absolute gem. Um, but, you know, it's hard work, as you know, Seamus. Like, it's not going to happen for any Nobody gets anything for nothing. You know, you have to go out there and tour and get to know the public you know yeah and that is even the way that uh, the contestants they do get out there uh, going out with their mentors and different uh, country artists to be seen and it is a great little platform as you say they're getting their television coverage and then they are making appearances all around the country and building up their name uh, as you said Lisa McHugh of course she I uh, think it was uh, the year that Carmen McLaughlin won it she was in it and then when Lisa came back as a mentor last year she had Shauna Max Travick and Shauna she has had a number of singles since then even though she wasn't in even she didn't even make it to the final shall we say last year but with the publicity and coverage that she got she was able to uh, go out and make a bit of a career for herself you know I know fair play to her but you have to put the work in don't you Shane it's like everything else in life you know it's getting the name out there and getting the experience in front of the cameras week in week out 
can't beat that for helping you to hone your stagecraft and to be fair to Charlie and to Katrine and John. Now, I don't have a note in my head, but I know they know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, <do> we <laughs> I'm a bit like yourself, James. You know, I'm just kind of going, along, going with the flow there on the night. But Wait. they know what they're talking about and they give them really insightful commentaries trying to improve them. And they might not get that anywhere else, you know, so it's an opportunity if you if you were if you can welcome constructive criticism to really improve yourself, you know. Well, you see, as you said, the the judges are there, like you know, on the say, the like of the X Factor or, or even some of the other television shows, you know, the talent shows or whatever. They're usually you'll have the bad guy that's there to just to kind of drive in the knife, and then you'll have the good. You, you kind of have good cop, bad cop, and all that, and it's very much a played out to the cameras sort of a thing. They, they don't really yeah. seem to care about the <laughs> contestants. Whereas, what I do see with the like of John and Katrina and Charlie is that when they are giving the advice, it is good advice. It's uh, they're constructive to try and help them. They are, they are. That's hundred percent true. Really, they're genuinely trying to see them go on. And if somebody has a has you know has a bit of a moment, maybe forget a few lines or something in a song, they're not really trying to fill them. You know, at the end of the show, they're <laughs> they're trying to encourage them not to let it. You know, totally knock their confidence. They're coming back next week. Don't let it happen again. It happens to the best of us. And so. It's a lovely show to be part of, and I think that that comes through. I hope that comes through for the, everybody at home who's watching. That you know, we all enjoy being there as much as the contestants enjoy being on stage, and you know, it's a good, it's a good night out. And of course, uh, it ha- what is it? Twelve years going now, is it? It's tw- oh, I'd, say, I'd say I'd say at least that going. Yeah, yeah. Dario Shea was doing it for a while, and then <laughs> I stepped in. I had been doing another one previous to that, Kjol Tita. We were touring around the country and we were meeting country stars on the up. That was when myself and Mike Denver were just a twinkle in the eye. I can remember meeting Mike when he was about 17 and I was 19 and, or 20 and we were presenting um, the QLT that he was on it. He was just starting out at the time. So, yeah, yeah we've been well, on the country road now with TG Cahar for probably going on 20 years nearly. Yeah, well, Mike Denver now, he has made a good name for himself anyway. He's ah, yeah, and he's a class act. Ah, and is, we yeah. love having Mike on the show as well. He's just a genuine, genuine person, and um, the, and everybody loves him. Like you see, his fan base are so loyal, and you know he knows he's he's, he's got it. I think you know he's like Daniel O'Donnell. He knows nearly every one of them by name. I'd say, and nearly every illness or every family member, even if to change to change the goldfish in the bowl at home, that he'd nearly know about. <laughs> But you're not because he's a genuine person, you know. You, you wouldn't get that anywhere else, really. No, you know, no. It's, it's I, a rare thing, and that's why he's doing so well, I think. Actually, one of the people that loves Mike Denver, just say hello to Nicola Arnold there for me, will you, Aoife, please? Hello, Nicola. How are you? Yes, yeah, she's a huge fan, and of course, of Jerry Guthrie as well. But but uh, now, <clears throat> as I was saying, you're going with Glortier about 12 years. I believe you have a bit of an exclusive for us. Only hot off the presses about 10 yeah. minutes ago, would I believe. This is true, this is true. Just for yourself now, Seamus, you were in the right place at the right time, as they say. And T.G. Cahar are yeah. interested in running another series, giving us the 13th. And we're going to start advertising for contestants next week. So this hasn't even been published on our Facebook page yet. But we hope to have the details um, of the auditions and how to get involved in the audition process. We're looking for next year's contestants already because it's a long search. We really try and find... Um, new talent, new faces, um, all over the country. We're trying to get everybody from Cork to Tyrone and from yeah. east to west as well, as much as we can. So all the details will be on the Glorty, the Facebook page, hopefully within the next week. I mean, it's literally, I spoke to the producer not even an hour ago about it, and she was saying, look, just let, let Seamus know, hot off the press, we're looking for new talent. Well, there you have it, folks. There you have it. There is an exclusive, an exclusive. So I'll tell you, I'm going to let you go because, uh, well, you see, I know, you see, that you, I have to put on my makeup. I know you don't need a whole lot of makeup. Uh, Seamus, they're putting the scratch coat on me now. <laughs> well, you sh- uh, it's like And then this. the plastering will start later on. I tell you, you wouldn't want to see the amount of makeup they have to put on. Between hair and makeup, it's, it's a stag all day long. The fellas have it so easily. They literally powder their nose and out the door, but the women, I'm telling you, you've no idea. Yeah, well, actually, I arrived up there last week <laughs> and I saw, a, I think it was a, um, 
what he, uh, Samantha Breslin, I think it was, yeah, and she getting her hair done and whatever. I was going to offer her uh, to go over and get mine done as well, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> sadly, I have not needed the, uh, the uh, uh, shall we say, the, the talents of a hairdresser for a while, other than on a sort of a, a search and find fee sort of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, long, it's a long time since I had to back comb my hair. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's taken nice and handy, Jay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, but anyway, thanks a million, Aoife, for uh, joining yeah. us here and filling us in a little bit on the background on Glorthea and all that. And it's great to have you on. And thanks a million. And look for, forward to uh, catching up and having a bit of a chat there later on this evening. Hopefully, we'll be looking, we'll be live at from half ten on TG Cahad, and uh, we'll be chatting later, Seamus, and thanks a million for asking me on, really appreciate it. And you know what, now, I'm going to get everyone, you see, that I want you tonight, right, at some stage, to just oh, give... Oh, no, 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 here no, no, we no. go, this will be the crack now. <laughs> to give a thumbs up, you see, right, <laughs> a, a thumbs up, and just a kind of, a thumbs up and a wink to the camera, right? A thumbs up. And a wink. A thumbs up and a wink, you see, to the camera, right? And all the ICMR <laughs> listeners now that are after getting the exclusive today, they will know what that is about, all right? So will you do that for me, will you? Will you? I'll do it for you, James. I'll, I'll try and fit it in now if I can sneak it in there, you know? Sneak it in. Yeah, the thumbs up and a quick wink, you see, and... <laughs> And yes, then you see, <laughs> then everyone that's <laughs> listening in will say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so that's it. You see, I want you, you'll do that, won't you? Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I even I, have a cup of tea here. I'll keep sandwich. you in suspense. You have to tune in to see, Seamus. Be right. at half ten. <laughs> everyone that's listening in, you have to tune in tonight to Lord Tira and watch out. You can watch all the rest of the stuff, but especially watch for the wink and the thumbs up. Thanks a million anyway, Aoife, and catch up with you later on, and it's great to have uh, you. <laughs> lovely. It's long, Jim. It's long, Thank you very much.